Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Tuesday, February 4th, 2020, which means we are ready for this week's TNT Tuesday. Taking a look at social media, we can start seeing that Automata is starting to invade our classrooms, uh, which means we're going to have to go out there and begin uh, with our cam creation and getting all those assembled. Uh, but what about specialty parts? What about those things we can put on top? We can totally do that with Inventor, and I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips and tricks today on how to go about sort of doing that. So I'm going to say that my Automata is the Simpson-themed Automata, and of course, I'm going to go out there and uh, look for an image of Homer Simpson. When I find that image, I'm going to go ahead and do a save and probably just put, out there, put that out there in that folder where all my IPTs, my IAM, everything is located. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and use for this. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump over into Inventor. I'm going to come out here, go to New, and find Standard Inch IPT and hit Create. I'm going to go ahead and start a 2D sketch. I'm going to go ahead and pick on any work plane I'd like to work with. And then now what I'm going to do is come out here and go to Insert Image. And I'm going to go out there and find my Homer Simpson. And there he is. I'm going to go ahead and say Open That. I'm going to go ahead and just drop that in. The problem that most people have is when they go out here and drop in an image is that they never really take a look at what that actual image size is. All right, so I'm going to come over here and just take a look at this. We can see that that's about an inch tall. All right, so what I'm going to do is double click on this and I'm going to just say, hey, I want that to be about three inches tall. Now the thing, you know, instead of height, you know, what's even more important is taking a look at the width. If you're trying to avoid interference between parts, all right, the width of that part on top is going to be absolutely critical. So if I take a look at this, we can see that that's like a three by three image, which leaves me at the bottom, you know, with, um, you know, it might be about an inch and a half, you know, or, you know, around that image or around that dimension. That, that's going to be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep that. All right, and I'm just going to sort of go from here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just place some sunlight here in the center. All right, and the next thing I want to do is come out here and I'm going to use line. Now, this is where everybody sort of messes this up. Remember, if you're wanting to use constraints and you're wanting uh, your constraints to be pretty happy and wanting to work with you, go ahead and keep this a straight line right here at the bottom. All right, now this is the point when I come out here and use spline. Now, there's two different types of spline out there. There's something called control vertex, and there's something called interpolation. We definitely want to use the interpolation. It's going to work a lot better for us. Now, when students are usually doing this in my class, they usually go out there and make the mistake of trying to come in here and trace this using spline into every little nook and cranny. Don't do that, because more than likely, we're going to be taking this part, probably putting it on that corrugated plastic that comes with the PLTW box kit. Maybe we're going to be using foam board. Maybe we're going to be using cardboard. Okay, whatever that material is. Uh, it's going to be thicker and it's not going to be easy to cut. So what I tell my students to do is to come out here all right, and just somewhat get the overall shape out here that we're sort of looking for. All right, and we can just sort of skip past the details. So we're going to go ahead and do that now with Homer. And let's see if we can come up over the top, make sure to get his two little hairs that are there. And we're just going to keep coming here like so. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and finish all this up, take this back down to that straight line we have here at the bottom, like so. I'm going to go ahead and right click, say create, all right, and now we have that spline going around the outside of them. I'm going to go ahead and say OK on that and finish the sketch. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit extrude. I'm going to punch this into the other direction, making sure to keep this as a join. Of course, this it can only be a join at this point. And now I'm going to go ahead and just give this the thickness that I'm looking for. So I'm going to say that's that eighth of an inch, that corrugated plastic that comes with the box kit. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now when we get to this point, we can see that, you know, the, uh, the image that we were using was part of the sketch. So that was consumed with the extrusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here underneath extrusion. And then once again, underneath the sketch, I'm going to find that image. I'm going to right click and do a copy. Now I can go ahead and start a 2D sketch on this face. I can go ahead, right click, paste that on there. All right, if we hit project geometry, we can see that that is totally enclosed within that uh, profile. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. I'm going to go out there and do a decal. I'm going to pick on the image not once but twice. I'm going to say OK. And now we have our custom Homer Simpson part. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick save on this. So there is my Homer Simpson part. All right, so what do we do with it at this point? Well, we can easily come out here. We can go into uh, our IDW. 
And once we have our IDW open, here's a couple things we can do. We're gonna go out here to base, I'm be making sure that this is one to one, making sure that this is shaded and say okay. All right, so that first thing we can do is go out there and we can get the image that we need for our part. But at the same time, we're also gonna need a template that we can trace onto whatever material it is you're wanting to create the part. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do that again, but this time we're not going to go with shaded. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just turn off shading on that and say okay. So now we have our second thing that we can go out there, we could print off, cut out, and trace onto the material that we're looking to uh, you know, cut this out of. All right, so there you go. That's a standard part for an automata. Now, obviously, in this case, we're going to have to go out there and find a way to attach it to the follower rod that's on top of the automata. So you can either just glue this or you can go out there, maybe 3D print some parts, uh, you know, according to the, uh, the profile of the follower rod that you're using. So there you go. That's custom parts for automata. And that's it for this week's TNT Tuesday. Hope you have a great week.